PC or console? The big question, but one that's just been newly refreshed. We've got brand new hardware on the PC, we've got cutting edge tech in the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, so what should you go for and what is best? In this video, I promise I'm going to guide you to the answer. I'm going to walk you through all of the pros and cons of both platforms, and I'll be speaking openly and honestly about everything that's great about PC, Xbox Series X, and PlayStation 5, without shorting out on the not so good stuff. If you do want to get into PC gaming, then the easiest and simplest way of doing so is to actually grab yourself a pre-built system, which is why this video is proudly sponsored by CyberPower PC and Corsair. You're going to see a lot of this system in this video, and you can learn all about it, customize it your way, and of course gorge out on RGB bling by hitting that link in the description below. Oh, and there's a huge PC giveaway happening too, so stay tuned to the end of the video to learn how to enter. But whoa, 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 slow your roll for a second, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Let me start with the inspiration for this video, which is probably coming from an unlikely place for PC-centric which is me discovering how good the next generation consoles actually are. The start of a new cycle brings awesome things, and this time around we get a new standard of 4K, 60 frames a second gaming on both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. And this is such a big deal, I really can't stress enough. 30 FPS gaming has and always will be fine, but being able to play games in a far smoother and more responsive manner while having PC level settings and 4K resolution is just phenomenal. And recently I've been spending a lot of my time in the evenings on both the Series X and the PlayStation 5, with Spider-Man, Demon's Souls, Forza Horizon 4 and Gears Tactics being my personal favourites. And I think that the biggest compliment that I can actually pay to these things is that coming from super high-end PC gaming, I can't really notice much of a difference. And to make things even better on the next generation, they now even support 120 frames a second gaming. And this is unheard of for consoles. And it finally gives you console gamers a lot of flexibility, so long as you have a high refresh rate TV to match. But there is an absolute whopper of a catch. And that's that it's up to the developers to actually implement these features for you. You might want to play at 120 frames a second at a lower resolution, but if the option's not there, you're out of luck. Especially with older titles, it's a big ask to ask developers to actually go back and update all of these things. There's not necessarily a financial incentive for them, so are they going to do it? Probably not. I think it's fair to assume that 4K60 is probably going to be the target for most console games, along with a couple of other options on the side, but you're never going to get the true choice of settings that is available on the PC platform. If you want 30 frames a second in 4K with ray tracing, sure. 240 frames a second at 1080p, absolutely no problem. You have so many options to pick from that you can tailor every game to meet your individual preferences, and even introduce settings that aren't available on consoles at all. Not only that, but if you do want to play at 120 frames a second, then this is still very new for TVs and they are extremely expensive. Whereas on PC, you can grab a 120Hz monitor for around about £250, give or take. It's quite impressive really, and then play all of your games at 120 frames a second, not just a select handful. And of course, don't forget that the limit is not 120 frames a second. This is a 200Hz monitor, but they currently go up to 360. So if you're serious about gaming and you literally have the bills to pay the skills, I've got that wrong, haven't I? 360Hz monitors are for people that have the skills to pay the bills. Why do you watch my videos, like seriously? And of course, don't forget about my personal favourite, ultra-wide monitors, to transform games into something that wraps your entire vision. I'd like to see consoles do that. However, the big counter to all of this is that PC gaming is a little bit more of an overwhelming process. And to be honest, I agree with this. It's not necessarily complicated, but there's quite a lot to do. You need five different launches, more or less, if you want all of the games. You need to have them open so that they update all of the time. You need a chat client. You need to keep your drivers updated for best performance. Again, it's not complicated, but it's definitely a lot more steps. With consoles, I love being able to finish a day working in the studio, grabbing myself a cup of tea, and then resuming my game from exactly where I left off, within seconds of holding down the Xbox button. Both the PlayStation 5 and Series X are so fast now, with navigation super quick and easy, and both are an absolute joy to use. Because each of the new consoles use PCIe Generation 4 SSDs, the load times of the games themselves are massively reduced, firmly marking these experiences as next gen. Of course though, the PC has had these options for years, and you can easily spec up a computer exactly how you like. 
CyberPower PC's configurator, for instance, makes this process incredibly simple, and best of all, it requires absolutely no knowledge of the inner workings of a PC or how to install one. The drives themselves are also a whole lot cheaper than all of the expansion options currently available for the Xbox. And on the subject of customization, I know it is subjective, but in my eyes, I think it is a huge win for the PC. The Xbox is fine, but a little bit dull, and then the PlayStation 5 is quirky, but a little bit too bulky. The PC, though, can be quite literally whatever floats your boat. Yes, you can get a case that's a boat. That was... That sounded like a joke, but it's not. It's true. The Corsair case that we have here is quintessentially the full-fat RGB experience, with tempered glass, light-up memory, and of course, RGB cooling fans. CyberPower calls this the IQ Infinity Gaming PC, but it's actually a Corsair 220T for those in the know, upgraded with light loop RGB fans for crazy lighting effects and even more effective cooling. The beauty is that if you don't like this style, or you want something bigger, or smaller, or a little less bright, then there are countless options available for you. It's entirely up to you. But oi, centric are you cry? What about the funds, the dollar, the moolah? I heard PC gaming was expensive. Not sure why I went full British there, but let's go with it. And the answer is indeed yes. PCs are more expensive, but it's not quite a one-to-one. -one. Both the PlayStation 5 and Series X are around about £450, and to be able to get 4K 60 frames a second gaming for that with PCIe Generation 4 storage is just insane. There is absolutely no doubt that if you bought a rivaling PC with similar specs, it would cost at least double that. So if you do want the cheapest cost of entry, then consoles certainly have you covered. Cost of ownership though is definitely a very different story, and I'm not going to get into an argument with you here because there are different opinions on the matter, but generally speaking games are a little bit cheaper on the PC. I paid £70 £70 for Demon Souls on the PlayStation 5, a remake, crazy stuff, and of course you never need to pay for online services for something like PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live. And obviously those do come with free games, but if you take those out of the equation, that cost does start to add up. A big PC selling point, and one that I'm a huge advocate for, is the argument that a gaming computer is way more than just a gaming machine. It's also a streaming station, workstation, creative hub, and much, much more. I create all of my videos on my gaming PC and literally have my career as a result of my initial investment. Sure, you may not become a lame English nerd like me, but there's a lot of avenues that do become possible from having decent hardware, even if it's just staying up late on Reddit every night. There are also more gaming specific advantages too. Things like PC modding always comes up a lot, which is where you can take a game and tweak it slightly to make it even better or way worse, don't worry, I won't judge. But the thing that I love the most about the platform, and always will do, is its flexibility. I want to use a controller in some games, but in most, I'd probably rather use a mouse and keyboard. And yes, 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 Xbox supports them too, but in such a small amount of titles that it's a bit of a moot point at this moment in time. With a gaming PC, you can use a joystick, mouse, keyboard, controller, in any shape or form, and barring a few bad apples, most games are pretty interchangeable, and you could actually use them all at the same time. You're probably thinking that on consoles you have a few exclusive games, and that's definitely true on the PlayStation 5. Things like God of War is obviously a big selling point. But let's not forget that on the PC you have exclusive genres. There are so many great games that just don't exist on consoles, with genres like RTS and MOBA reigning supreme on the PC. There are definitely exceptions, and it is nice to see that many of them are coming across to consoles, but the greats are born and bred on PC. So that's the real selling point of PC gaming right there. The freedom. There's no hands tied behind your back, there's no guide rails. The full gamer that you are can be unleashed. And you can do so however pleases you really. Whether you want to go on an ultra-wide monitor, you want to play your own exclusive games, you want to play at whatever settings, whatever frame rates, it's all up to you. It turns into a little bit of a hobby. Research this, upgrade that, plan your future build, tweak a few sliders. A rabbit hole for some, but a gaming home for all. Factor in the yearly releases of graphics cards and other parts, and it's easy to stay at the cutting edge. Or use your baby for four, five, six years. Again, it is entirely up to you. But the honest truth is that a lot of people just don't want that. 
They don't want a box that they have to think about. They don't want to update their drivers. They just want to pick up the controller and resume where they left off. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And the next generation of consoles, as I've already said, are so, so impressive and offer fantastic value. It's excellent that there's the choice. It's excellent that last night I could play Call of Duty with one of my friends who was on PlayStation while I was playing on PC. We're heading in such a great direction, but it's all about getting the thing that's right for you. You just really need to know what that is. No, I went off script. I wrote a really good line. Wait, let me, let me, let me start again, line it back up. And while we won't get the option sheet, you never have to pick from one either. Yes. Let me know what platform you play on and why. Are you going to be picking up a new PC? Or maybe you're gonna go for a next generation console? Or maybe you're gonna be greedy and you're gonna have both. I would absolutely love to hear from you and do let me know your thoughts down in that comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, then please smash that like button, get subscribed, you can check out PC Builds. Don't forget that you can learn a little bit more about PC gaming over on CyberPower PC and pick up your very own RGB gaming rig without having to touch the screwdriver. You can check that out down in the link below alongside Corsair and all of their RGB goodies. And I did say that there is also a big PC gaming giveaway happening. CyberPower PC are lovely and handling it for me. You can find all the information in a little tweet that I will leave down in that description below for you. So head over to Twitter and all of the instructions are there. I know you're thinking that was way too easy. Why couldn't you tell me at the start of the video? Because I wanted you to watch the video because I'm evil like that. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. I'm not evil, really. I mean, I, I care about PC gaming. I'm, I'm a guardian angel of PC.